So we have pathway for innate responses and a pathway for learned responses. And then we have this other pathway. And in humans, it's a little bit controversial as to whether or not it sits truly separate from the standard olfactory system or whether or not it's its own system embedded in there, but that they call the accessory olfactory pathway. Accessory olfactory pathway is what in other animals is responsible for true pheromone effects. For example, in rodents and in some primates, including mandrels, have you ever seen a mandrel? They have these like big beak noses things. You may have seen them at the zoo. Look them up if you haven't seen them already. M-A-N-D-R-I-L-S mandrels, there are strong pheromone effects. Some of those include things like if you take a pregnant female rodent or mandrel, you take away the father that created those fetuses or fetus and you introduce the scent of the urine or the fur of a novel male. She will spontaneously abort or miscarry those fetuses. A very powerful effect. Another example of of a pheromone effect is called the Vandenberg effect, named after the person who discovered this effect, where you take a female of a given species that has not entered puberty, you expose her to the scent or the urine from a sexually competent, meaning post-pubertal male, and she spontaneously goes into puberty earlier. So something about the scent triggers something through this accessory olfactory system. This is a true pheromonal effect and creates ovulation right, and menstruation, or in rodents it's an estrous cycle, not a menstrual cycle. So this is not to say that the exact same things happen in humans. In humans, as I mentioned earlier, there are chemical sensing between individuals that may be independent of the nose, but those are basically the three paths by which smells, odors impact us.